Today we will learn about the transport of carbon dioxide in blood. Around 2.7 ml of carbon dioxide is carried in physical solution in 100 ml of venous blood. Most of the CO2 is transported as bicarbonates. So, carbonic acid will react with the following compounds in order to form bicarbonates. Let us see how this occurs. Carbonic acid reacts with plasma proteins. Sodium is always found in association with these plasma proteins. So, when they react with carbonic acid, bicarbonates are formed. Especially sodium bicarbonate is formed. Potassium and hemoglobin are found in close association in the RBC. So, this will react with carbonic acid again to form potassium bicarbonate. The sodium chloride ion is present in the plasma. This will react with carbonic acid again to form sodium bicarbonate. Disodium hydrogen phosphate is also a compound present in blood which reacts with carbonic acid to form bicarbonates. Hence, 60% of the bicarbonate is transported by plasma itself and the rest only is done by RBC. Not only is carbon dioxide transported in the form of bicarbonates but also as carbamino compounds. Hemoglobin, just like any other protein, has an amino group. This NH2 group is going to react with carbon dioxide to form carbamino hemoglobin. This chloride shift mechanism or hamburger phenomenon named after its discoverer is a mechanism by which the CO2 is buffered to form sodium bicarbonate. Here the carbon dioxide which is re released from the tissues after all the metabolic activity is done, there is an increased uh, concentration of CO2 because of which this enters into the RBC. Once it enters into the RBC, it reacts with water to form carbonic acid. So, this reaction occurs due to the presence of an enzyme carbonic anhydrase. This carbonic anhydrase enzyme will function only in the presence of zinc ions. Now, this carbonic acid is going to dissociate giving hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. This hydrogen ion will now combine with hemoglobin forming hydrohemoglobin. Releasing the K plus ions are made free here so that it can accept the chloride ions which are entering into the RBC. So, this bicarbonate which is formed inside the RBC, the concentration becomes very high and it leaves the RBC. It reaches the plasma where sodium ions are free to accept them. So, sodium and this bicarbonate will combine forming sodium bicarbonate and this is how most of the CO2 is transported in plasma. Whereas earlier before the entry of chloride ion, the potassium ions were in close combination with hemoglobin and also a certain amount was in close combination with bicarbonate. But on entry of Cl ions, potassium dissociated giving way for hydrohemoglobin. Now, this hydrohemoglobin will dissociate forming H plus ion and will release the hemoglobin free so that oxygen can come and bind to it. This increased hydrogen concentration will help in the production of more and more water molecules thereby allowing the reaction to occur again and again. Let us summarize what we learned today. The bicarbonate ions which are formed in the RBC are not transported by them but instead by plasma. 
so the bicarbonate ions are going to move out from the rbc to the plasma and hence there is an increased level of bicarbonate ions in the plasma similarly in order to equalize the number of bicarbonate ions that have gone out of the rbc equal amount of chloride ions are going to enter into the rbc thus increasing the level of chloride ions inside the rbc and in the plasma the level of chloride ions is going to decrease but whatever has changes have happened the cations they do not move sodium and potassium cannot easily pass through the membrane of rbc so the cation concentration remains unchanged both in the plasma and rbc but the water content and the volume of the rbc increases henceforth we have understood in detail about the transport of co2 in blood